you to say to yourself, I deserve this. I love it. I am nature's greatest miracle. Go ahead, say it. I, I Trust me, Homer. I Take a step and say it. I deserve this. Louder. I deserve this. Shout it. I am nature's greatest miracle. tried yelling that right after you did something like really cool? Uh, no. Have you ever done anything really cool? Uh, no. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Actually, no. I wish I had had the foresight to have screamed, I am nature's greatest miracle, <laughs> right after my hole-in-one. That would have been great. That <laughs> would have been a pretty cool move. Absolutely. That's just it. Huh? But you didn't. No, I didn't, and uh, the moment is lost and ruined forever. So you'll have to wait till the next opportunity to do something that cool. Those always come along every moment. <laughs> it's KGB, the Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Radio Show, where uh, yesterday we put the fellas uh, on the great big iron bird and sent them out to Peoria, Arizona, to uh, go shopping for uh, bridal gifts for all the players out there because they yes. <laughs> missed a lot of wedding prizes. Yes, we have. Fellas, how's Arizona? Outstanding. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good, good. It's beautiful. Good. It's a beautiful, clear day. We're outside in the patio, outside the uh, players' uh, facility here at the complex, and it's outstanding. Let's see. What are we, uh, what's today is the 23rd, so yes. we're really basically in the last week of spring training here, right? That's right. With our first uh, game, is it April 3rd? Yes. April 3rd is the first game. And that's at Shea in uh, New York. New York City. Is that a long uh, home stand? When do we get our first home game? Our first, I believe our first fo- is the 12th. I'm going to have to check that out. Something like that. Yeah. Well, we're very excited to hear from the players this morning. We uh, sent Boyer. I, well, I don't know why we sent Boyer, but we sent I Chainsaw. We sent Chainsaw <laughs> to spring training. I think we sent Boyer just to keep Chainsaw company. Right. Is that basically it? Uh, yes, and and as I as I sit here and we've talked baseball, and that's uh-huh. all we've been talking about. Uh, I've I've kind of wondered the same thing. Why why Boyer? <laughs> you're talking baseball with Boyer? Oh yeah. Does yeah. he pretend to understand what you're what you're talking about? Chris, pipe in. You're here. Well, Chainsaw and I have uh, discussed some of the uh, offensive strategies that the Padres may try this year, as well as their defensive lineup. And- Name one. Uh, th- well, th- they have I many. We don't want to talk about it. They should hit the ball <laughs> and then run to the uh, base place. <laughs> we don't want to give away any uh, potential game-winning secrets. I want you to know, Boyer, that not even being here, <laughs> not even being here, you pissed off Shelly first thing in the morning. You managed to irritate me. Not Fantastic. even here, you pissed her off. Oh, I love this. I want. I no, know you more. would. You would love it. What do you do? He left his damn truck out front. We have limited parking as it is. Shelly is mad at. Uh, well, a lot of people. Well, yeah. When it comes to parking, and I have to, I have to share her anger. You know, we we are very, we do have limited parking here, and uh, there are people who work here overnight who could park anywhere they want, right? And they selfishly snag, uh-huh. hog, if uh-huh. you will, all the decent parking spots. Absolutely. So well, that yes. Shelly and I are required to walk, walk in excess of sixty, seventy feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, Shelly, why don't you uh, do the math and figure out that my truck is there, Chainsaw's is not. We're minus one today because a, of me. That's a net minus one. So you're welcome. Still pisses me off. I don't know. I, mean, I, 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 think she <laughs> yeah. was, I think she was looking forward to a boyer-free day, and the first thing, yeah. first thing, first thing that I greeted her. This ugly reminder. Is Ew. it the sky blue bunny truck? Yes. That's the, the worst crabby one, and you know what? The, the crappy one, that's the redundant. The crabbiest one. Now somebody's <laughs> hurt the windshield. So it's got spider, you know, spider web all over it. Oh, yeah, smash up a windshield? Specially yeah. installed, actually. You smash up a windshield, Boyer? It was one of the selling points. That's the reason I bought that thing. Oh, it came that way. Yeah, yeah. I thought you, if the uh. sun was shining just right, you could see the image of Jesus, and I thought I would be able to charge a dollar admission. It's like a prism. Yeah. To entertain you <laughs> while you're driving. It's like, it's like one of those uh, dream catcher things that people hang below the uh, review mirror. Yeah, like you see on Viejas oh, commercials. Yeah. It looks just like that. All so. right. Fantastic. 
Well, is uh, is Arizona in March as uh, beautiful as it always is? It really is. It's crystal. It's uh, <clears throat> a little chillier, I would say, in the early part of the day than uh, San Diego, but it's it's just perfect, as Shelley well knows. Absolutely. Now, does uh, ha- has Boyer been uh, busy uh, working? Do we have a produced piece from Chris Boyer to uh, enjoy later today? Uh, indeed, we do. But actually, it's his description. We went out uh, hitting golf balls yesterday, and I did a little play-by-play of a medley of some of his uh, finer attempts. And uh, <laughs> the underline is attempts. Did people me. die? Did I'll anyone... tell you what. I mean, there's, yeah. there's. Uh, I mean, if you if you've ever if you've ever, I mean, if you're any kind of a sports fan, and you know what, there are some things in sports that transcend even the love of sports itself. Just the beautiful grace. Yes. The form of secretariat yes. blasting out mm-hmm. of the pack. Yes. Uh, Ted Williams stroking the ball. Chris Boyer swinging a five iron. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it is I mean, a- it will erase any doubts in your mind that there is a God above who creates this human grace. He's an actor. <laughs> <laughs> Very well oh, done. Thank you. That was top of the head, too. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to take a timeout. We're coming back with sports for the boys. They are in Peoria with the Padres this morning. Padres on the air with us today, the final week of spring training. And still to come, details on how yesterday Abramowitz nearly killed me to what? death. Killed me to death. Oh, no. And I'm not exaggerating. Did he finally snap? Sorry, Shelly, you're going to have to wait uh, through uh, a commercial break. You're killing me. But I am not kidding. He nearly killed me to death oh. yesterday. Bring it your way. Don't go away. This Monday, 101.5 KGB has your chance to come face to face with dead people. I see dead people. Dead people. The KGB has your chance to see the sixth sense of the haunted hotel. Listen to the KGB to win your way into our private screening from Blockbuster Video and the 101.5 KGB. Russian women are getting some cross your heart support from Southern California tonight. They're calling the effort Cups for Commies. The Russian economy is so bad right now, thousands of Russian women can no longer afford bras. So this is the way Rock's morning show lent a high-flying hand to the women in need. The team collected hundreds of bras from prominent San Diegans and famous Hollywood contributors. Some of the undergarments were flaunted from hot air balloons high over Del Mar today. (laughs) Right now, the bras are on a flight to Russia. The guys from that radio station called me the other day and they said you donated. Oh, not, not for real. I joked. I don't, they, no, they don't want. They don't. Oh, okay. Oh, man. It was black. It was lacy. And it held three women's worth of boobs. <laughs> it was no joke. Of course not. She has the boobs of three women. She does. <laughs> and we mean that in the best possible way. How else is the? How else can you mean? That? I don't know. There's no other way to take it. When I say I've got the strength of ten men, when uh-huh. I say she's got the boobs of three women. Exactly. Everyone knows what I mean. Good thing. How you doing? Super. Really? Well, you know, I'm awake. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm just, I'm just tired. Is, is, it's is, early. Is this what's distressing you this morning? Oh, I haven't seen that. Uh, what is in, it? You're in the newspaper again today. Oh no. Yes. What happened? And they spelled your name wrong. Oh, oh. God. <sighs> Which newspaper? Well, it's the reader, so it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> I'm going back to being sleepy. <laughs> it's all right. Does anyone read that? Yes, I'm oh, reading it. Okay, all right, all right, okay. I'm reading it right here. Who wrote this? Do we know? Uh, Ken Layton. Oh, goody. The uh, news nuzzle nuzzler. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. Who nuzzled and never called. Who? What? Where were you guys that night? Uh, Jeanette and I were at the Beck concert. The what? The Beck concert. What you the know? hell were you doing there? Did you lose a bet? <laughs> no, uh, Beck is a he's a popular artist with the young kids, Dave. My point. And you are? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see him. And we got, it was at, uh... Here's a Hershey boy from Mama. <laughs> <laughs> we had gone, what is the place on uh, UCSD's campus? Is that Remac? 
that yes. is there. Anyway, okay, that's where it was, and and we were trying desperately to Where's get back. Where's the place where all those kids hang <laughs> out today? <laughs> What's all it? The, the young soda shop. Hang out, <laughs> right? But they'd arrest you if you hung out at the high school. So Round the wireless. <laughs> So anyway, we were trying to get backstage, and we thought that uh, being nice to Ken Layton would do it for us. And all oh. we got was nuzzled and ignored. Because everyone knows that Ken Layton's got connections, baby. Uh. I didn't know it was a couple of years ago, and I was ni- I was naive then. I didn't know. <laughs> he didn't uh, nuzzle the news nozzles at the Del Mar Fair media party? I haven't been to that thing in ages, years and years and years. Oh, Since I Ken Layton nuzzled your news nozzles. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't. I thought it was at the Del Mar Fair media party where no. he nuzzled your news nozzles. I hardly ever go to that thing anymore. I know that anymore. This was several years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah, but th- I haven't been there. I haven't been to the Del Mar thing in eight years, and this was about four years ago. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think that was the year he touched me in some way. Oh, fantastic. Oh, maybe it was an... A- yeah, okay, I got it. And did you explain to him that you're not, you're not into men? Well, I think I was... And men never get into you? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, well. I was wearing some kind of Leap and Lesbo button, and he wanted it. And, oh, he asked if he could kiss it. Oh, he he's is. just a oh, weirdo. He's out got some moves. I let him kiss it, but I didn't give it to him. God. He's got some moves. Well, he spelled your name wrong, Shell. Bastard. How do you spell it again? Just one E. What do you mean, just one E? S H E L L Y. No. No. He spelled it B U S T E R. Close. Oh, yeah. The story is about. Uh, well, we've killed another radio station, apparently. Apparently, the planet's going away. Oh! I know, you speak for a city. <laughs> Where's my black armband? Okay. <laughs> Armageddon all over again. All the DJs, all the DJs' uh, contracts at the planet. Is that actually the name of the radio station? you got to have call letters, don't they? KPLN, I believe, is... Are you serious? Mm-hmm. I thought so, yeah. yeah. that's it. it. Sounds just like planet to me. Mm-hmm. Apparently, all their contracts have have lapsed, and they're going to become a talk radio station. Oh, really? Well, we sold it. Right. We bought it, and then, and then sold, we it. sold it. And uh, and they're going to turn it into a talk radio station. And then the guy who's in charge of the company that bought it, mm-hmm. he's saying, um, if you could pull it off, if I was going to San Diego, I would try to get Dave Buster and Chainsaw. <laughs> You guys been bringing someone named Buster in when I'm gone. Look, Buster. (laughs) I would try to get Dave Buster and Chainsaw because obviously this guy's a great admirer of ours. Oh, yeah. Big time fan. (sighs) Well, I know he digs me and I think he digs the saw, but apparently someone named Buster. I think it meant meant Boyer. That's pretty close. Yeah, right. (laughs) Dave Buster and And Chainsaw. (laughs) You know, the one time we get in the newspaper... For being, huh. you know, you know, like desired, yeah. Instead of like for being shamed. Right. I know. <laughs> it's like one time, one time a decade we get uh-huh. in the newspaper because someone wants to hire us, not because we've done something ridiculous right. or you know we're apologizing to someone or begging forgiveness. Some fringe right. religious cult group is burning crosses and goats in the middle of the night with our name. These guys actually want to hire us, and they call us Dave Buster. Buster. Well, you know what? Let's go. I bet I'll make a lot of money with those people. Yeah, Yeah, I'm Buster. Do we have to change our name to that if we take the gig? (laughs) Yes. I'm kind of warming up to it. Yeah, I think you have... call me Buster. Yeah, but I mean, come on. We got all these things, all these, you know, here's Doc Severinsen. Yeah. You know, we... Hang on a second here. Well, Cookie is a master at seamless editing when somebody moves from one Thank you. establishment yes. to the other. Maybe you could work on all the stuff that we have. I'll just go by Buster. I mean, if it's for the good of the team and, and you know, we're at a place where they want us. Let's see here. This is Doc Severinsen. Dave. Buster. A chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah. Love your show, Berber. You can hardly you tell. Go. What was wrong with that? You can hardly tell. <laughs> As long as you're up for it, I'm up for it. Buster's fine with me. I get a couple of bucks out of the deal. That's okay. Buster. <laughs> 622 already. Sports with a chainsaw is next here. It's KGB San Diego.
This is KGB, the Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Radio Show. Today we're giving away $5,000. Everybody who's qualified for the Vegas or Bust Grand Prize. Everybody who's qualified, your name's in a hat. And you know that's a lie because we don't even have a hat. <laughs> How'd they do the drawing, Shooty? Who, who, how are we determining who wins this thing? Uh, there will be a drawing out of a box, actually. Oh, we have a box? Yes. All right, fantastic. All the names are written on a piece of paper. They go into a box, uh, separate pieces of paper. We'll just pull them out. Random drawing, $5,000 cash money. The grand prize winner uh, on Vegas or bust. And then you have to determine, thus completing programming genius Tad Smalls. Uh-huh. Critical plan. Yeah. Will it be yeah. going to Vegas uh-huh. or enhancing your bust? Uh-huh. Or anything else <laughs> you can do with $5,000. But you must decide when we award you the $5,000. We must have your answer. <laughs> we must know. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh-huh. Let's go to sports. Here's the chainsaw on KGB. Good morning. Well, good morning and thank you, David, and hello again, everybody, in the sports world. Padres manager Bruce Bochy has made the decision. Damian Jackson will be the opening day shortstop for the Padres, relegating former starter Chris Gomez to the bench. Jackson brings a better bat to the plate, more speed, healthier knees, a trade-off for Gomez's proven consistency. Pitcher Sterling Hitchcock phoned it in yesterday, giving up 14 hits and six Ooh. runs against mostly Angel subs and AAA players in an 8-1 to loss to Anaheim at Peoria Stadium. Padres hope that Hitchcock turns it up a notch on opening day when the games start to count. Shea Stadium against the Mets Monday. Hopefully Hitchcock will bring his A game and take it to the next level. Okay. Your 2000 world champion Padre starting lineup appears to be Carlos Hernandez catcher, Ryan Klesko at first, Brett Boone second, Jackson at short, 1999 team MVP Phil Nevin at third, Al Martin in left. Should get two of those. Uh, Ruben Rivera center, Tony Gwynn right, with Hitchcock, Woody Williams, Matt Clement, Brian Bowringer, and Brian Meadows, your five pitching starters. Who are those guys? I'll tell you who. They are the first World Series champions of the millennium. That's who. Coming up later in the show, an exhaustive preview of the major leagues, team by team, player by player, coach by coach, minor league system by minor league system. Boring. But that's tentative. To be announced. Got to clear it through programming. We've worked very hard putting that package together. Other baseball news. In a Playboy interview, Pete Rose says playing baseball was better than sex. Because after all, who would want to have sex with Pete Rose? Although he did make it to first base faster than anybody else. Another pressing question. Did Pete Rose ever gamble on sex? If so, he could face a lifetime ban into celibacy, especially... If he betted on his own sex. Meanwhile, in the National Bank. Now, a monitor sports special. Uh, Another report on the $100,000 All-Star Bowling Tournament. Here's Sam Levine at Convention Hall, Philadelphia. Well, I guess we're having a little problem down there with the storm or something. We can't get a hold of Sam Levine. And is he there now? Okay, Sam, go. All in Philadelphia for a monitor sports. (laughs) (laughs) That's it. (laughs) We are still going to try and get Sam Levine. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Fellas, are we going to try and get... Okay, all right. When I say go, you the next voice you hear will be that of Sam Levine. Since we... <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, you can't win them all, friends. <laughs> we tried to get Sam Levine, and things, the gremlins or the poltergeists or something got in the way, and they missed it. Yeah, Sam, are you there? Not yet? Okay, a little music. I'm on the phone. Tell them we're ready. What's your phone number? (laughs) 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 
Skitball Association. Six games last night. Denver piled Washington. Charlotte webbed Detroit. Cleveland sweet home to Chicago. Utah chugged to the Sixers. The Knicks nolted Seattle. And the Lakers chevied Vancouver. The Lakers now a league best 60 and 12. And other sports table. What's this here about NCAA referees and uh, whatnot betting on the games? I haven't heard a thing about it. I heard this uh, this morning. Uh, what was it on? Uh, I think it was on uh, Paul Harvey. I think was talking about it. NCAA referees, uh, a shocking amount, four out of five betting on the games that they're officiating. You're There's kidding me. Big story coming up uh, about how uh, Final Four NCAA referees have been have been or, or they're sitting down in a big meeting to uh, discuss the wow the repercussions is of this absolutely scandalous i mean you know there that explains a lot of the bad calls i mean talk about the integrity of the sport when the referees blow calls just to cover their own bets and that's what they were doing oh my god right. more on that at 720 uh, yeah we'll investigate that david we'll get right on it it is 6.32 and 9 seconds. This is your 101.5 KGB Sports Network. Oh, my. Chainsaw Sports brought to you by the law offices of divorce attorney Robert J. Baumer. Six thirty six here, KGB, the Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Radio Show. I was reading a email from a guy who's got to go to work today and fire some people. Ooh, does he work here <laughs> <laughs> or the planet? Maybe uh. <laughs> that's got to be rough going to work knowing that you've got to fire someone that day. No, yeah, it would have be. you ever been in a position where you fired somebody? No, not never not ever ever ever. No. Thank God, too. I don't know. I'd probably end up quitting my job and letting them have it, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Darn it. Sorry. I turned into a Bromowitz. <laughs> I would. I mean, I guess the only thing you could look at now is that the economy is so good and the unemployment rate is so low here in San Diego that even if you're letting someone go, they're probably going to be okay. Sure. That's what I tell them anyway. You'll probably be fine. Now the new leader of the spin doctors. <laughs> Buster. <laughs> Thank you very much. You ever fired anybody, Chainsaw? Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and um, it's it's kind of akin to uh, breaking up with a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not a good day. It's not a good day, but you got to do it, and you got to be uh, resolved and solid about it. Whose ass did you can? Ah. Oh, I see. Okay, well, uh. I'll tell my story then. <laughs> I fired a guy one yeah. time. One guy, one time. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and I didn't have a problem with it because the guy would not show up for work. Oh well, then no problem. I I you know it was. It wasn't something that I, you know, enjoyed. It wasn't like he was a jerk and I was excited to do right. it. But I didn't have any problem with it because, you know, you can't make it to work. Forget it. Well, yeah, that's a big boy. Yep. I mean, I, that must have been fairly easy on the scale of having to fire people, of just saying, look, here's your absentee record. we got to let you go. Bye. I don't think I was that diplomatic about it. It was my <laughs> first time around. <laughs> Oh, maybe you'll be more gentle with me. Do they ha do they have people at businesses whose whose job is just to fire people? Well, I don't know. I my ploy was always to make friends with the people in accounting, because that way you'd know if your last check had been drawn up, and maybe you'd get a little heads up on it. You they know, give you a hint. Sure, yeah, exactly. But That's why Shell's such good friends <laughs> with the accountants here. A clear channel. Well, that policy ended a few oh. uh, uh, a few administrations ago. Well, I don't know why. They're I such don't charming, likable people. I don't either. I don't know why. Well, maybe it's because they think my money's theirs. Whatever. But you know, <laughs> human resources person that knows first. What's that? When nobody else knows, that human resources person knows. Is that right? Yeah. Probably not in our and, case. And then the person who cuts your last check. Yeah. So it starts with, well, obviously it starts with your boss. with uh, management, and who wants to be mm -hmm. friends with them? I mean, no, it's, but, you know, it's, it's just better to get fired than to have to be friends with them. But a lot of times an executive assistant or, you know, somebody in that position will know because they're bringing people in behind your back to interview. 
Yes, and they're drawing up the papers. <laughs> right. Making the travel arrangements. The pink papers. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Wasn't it that 90% of the time, whether you admit it or not, deep inside, you know when you're on the bubble? Sure, absolutely. You know. I'm trying to think. I've been fired a few times. Did I know? Uh, <laughs> I did the two times I am. Uh, I knew, and I welcomed it. Fire did me you, now! Did you cry? Cry! I, I was jumping for joy. I, cried one time. I think the first really bad time I just cried. <laughs> <laughs> like that? When I worked at no, when I worked at KSDO, he's like beating around the bush, and he and I, I'm just my eyes are getting bigger. And I go, "What were you oh, doing? Our, what was your job there?" I was the associate producer to the Roger Hedgecock talk show and oh. Stacey Taylor show at the time. And what, Hedgecock there. and Stacey Taylor? Yeah, I was the associate producer, so we helped both of them. What does that mean, associate producer? He helped book the guests, mainly. That's oh, okay. the main job you do, and you help them do whatever it Fetch is. Fetch coffee. So mm -hmm. that anytime anything goes wrong, just like Shooty, anytime anything goes wrong, it would be our fault. Filing Roger's corns, things like that? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's Wednesday, time to buff the bunions. Time for Daddy's corns. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did you have to massage Roger Hedgecock's Ew. feet? <laughs> huh? Does he have that big pointy middle toe? Sure does. Ew. Hammer toes. Shut up. <laughs> well, I ever even looked at his. What's the most toes. demeaning thing? What's the most demeaning thing you've ever had to do? Oh, not. And a, I don't mean oh, as a yeah. hooker. No, 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 not had to do, but. This one time he came into the Castillo lunchroom and Who he did? just, Roger did, in yes. front of all my coworkers, and he just yelled at me. Really? And almost, GD, how dare you? Why don't we have this on the air? It's all your fault. What are you doing sitting in here during my show and I need you to. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I and can't like, blame him. You no, do that all the time. Either, no. <laughs> and then after that, you were shocked when you were fired. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it was the beginning of a great big mass of um, firing that uh, I think like maybe 20 people ended up getting let go because they regrouped and all that kind of crap. Oh. And it, but it, when is Kelly sitting there telling me this, and I'm going, you sound like, you're, you're, you're not telling me I'm fired. Who, who you? fired you? Kelly Wheeler. Kelly who Wheeler. Also got fired, you know, a few years after that himself, as yeah. in just about everybody else over there. Yeah, yeah but you and never help him out by saying, you're not going to fire me. Well, just the way he's like beating around. I like the direct Make approach, him work please. No, and I'm... Make and him he work said, yeah, for I it. just burst out <laughs> You make them work for it to the point where they say, I'm sorry, you're fired. You have to say, what do you mean by that? <laughs> exactly. And now explain that to me. I don't understand. <laughs> well, he said, I what can, are you trying to say? You're like, done. Get out. <laughs> Just well, out with it, man. What do you mean by that? Don't beat around the bush. Speak your mind. <laughs> well, he, Get out. He said, no, I'm not fired. I could be a board op or, you know, answer the phone for the talk shows on the weekend. Bonus. <laughs> you know, over $6 an hour. Yeah. Oh, raise. <laughs> No, it wasn't a raise, actually. Uh, uh, oh, God. You're not getting fired. You're just having a 90% reduction in pay. That's all. <laughs> well, thank well, you. What was that thing that when a consultant comes in, that's where I didn't know you were supposed to, like, be on your toes and be uh, expecting uh, it just in case. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. Then How I long had you been in radio? Well, uh, not that long. I see. Because then I worked at Kiffham, and then a consultant came in again. So when I heard the C word then, I knew, and I was ready. You worked at Kiffham? Yeah. David Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do for Kiffa? I um, I did this. I worked in the morning with Susan D. And I did the news. I filled in for the news sometime. Susan and D. What? Susan DeVincent. Oh, okay. Who you've right. met? My, I have. My really good friends. I don't know if I've ever met Susan. Very nice. Oh, woman. you've met her a couple times. Too. When did I meet Susan? She DeVincent? loves you. Well, I, I appreciate that. I'm sure the. Uh, feeling is mutual. I just did not know that uh, that I had met her. Yeah, a couple times at the Del Mar Fair party for sure, oh, for okay. certain. All right. Was I nice? Yo, you were very she nice. Was oh, at cause our, she's because oh, she's really pretty. She was at our award show the other day. Did I meet her then? Oh, yeah. I don't oh, think you did, friend, but I said hello. She's, she's your friend who's married to a policeman. No, that's Nicole. That's a oh. different cute friend. Oh. Got a bunch of hottie friends. Susan's is a really nice person. That's is all she? you do is hang out with hot chicks, yeah. right? But I know a lot Keep of Keep yourself girls. in a state of sexual frustration right. all year? <laughs> no. Does Susan DeVincent know you've got the hots for her? I don't have the hots for her. How about your oh, friend Nicole? Why? I've known her for like 20 years. She's right. a good friend. And all my wife hanging with her is to get into her pants. I've right. known my wife for 20 years, and that's what I'm trying to do. Does Nicole know you have a crush on her? Uh, yeah. And she said if she was gay, that I'd, we'd be girlfriends. She'd hey. be by, I'd be her bitch. So you're crush. holding out some hope there, huh, for a conversion? No. Yeah, I, I never was. Uh, no. Get her all sloppy drunk some night? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would never do Bubbles that. Bubbles hole. <laughs> I would never do that. Uh -huh.
<laughs> I'd rather not be with straight girls. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's what I did with all the girls that were my friend. Uh -huh. Just hang out until they, you know, oh, they fell. <laughs> Looked at me in a different way on a Saturday night lonely. <laughs> Just that one literally time. fell down. Yeah. <laughs> I am here, baby. No, I, I don't hold out that kind of hope. Okay. You know the cool thing about women? Women get to have platonic friends. He's my pal. He's my bud. He's my platonic friend. I love him like a brother. He's my bud, my platonic friend. Men don't have platonic friends, okay? We just have women we haven't yet. As soon as I figure this out, I'm in there. I mean, I, got, I mean, we got some platonic friends, but oh no, I got some, but they all by accident. <laughs> Every platonic friend I got is some moment I was trying to f <laughs> I made a wrong turn somewhere. They ended up in the friend zone. Oh no! I'm in the friend zone! Well, let me know the first time you bagged Susan DeVincent, okay? Oh, my God. Or Nicole. Susan, they said it, not me, for everybody who's reporting that. <laughs> I don't even know the lady's name, but apparently I brought it up, huh? <laughs> she lied to you. Well, Nicole's the one that thinks you're hot. She right. yelled at me for going, God, how come you never told me how hot Dave is? Ah! <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> secretly, <laughs> secretly, you're telling her that all sorts of... Uh, he never remembers to come to be. Misleading <laughs> stories about me so that she'll no turn way. her affections to, to you. you. No uh, way. What do you mean? hates women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you know that I like women? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is uh, quarter to seven already here on the Dave Buster and Chainsaw Thank Show. You. Let's do traffic. Here's Route 66. <laughs> Southbound 15 slows in Escondido, Auto Parkway, all the way down to Via Rancho. South 5 slow on the coast at Manchester and North 805 heavy Balboa up into the Golden Triangle. And in Chula Vista, a major accident under investigation at 3rd and F Street. That intersection closed till 9 o'clock right in downtown Chula Vista. Coins or cards, whatever game you play, you'll find it at any of Lachlan, Nevada's exciting casinos. Call 1-800-4-Lachlan or log on to visit Lachlan.com today. Lachlan, Nevada. Play the way you like it. I'm Ruth 66 with Dave Shelley and Chainsaw on the 101 Five KGB. Well, I brought up the uh, the subject of having to fire people for uh, for a reason here. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> can I just go get a cup of coffee quickly? Give me a Snickers. One uh, last thing I can take from this heap. I want to hear from people who've actually been in that position, having to fire people. Oh. If uh, if you had like a really really uh, unusual experience uh, with it, and I guess. Uh, 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 Roger Hedgecock's people don't need to call. We've already heard the story about <laughs> Ruth 66 blubbering her way through the firing. 888-570-1015 uh, is the telephone number. Uh, if you had a really unusual experience firing someone or getting fired for that matter, let me hear about it next. 888-570-1015. world-class rock this is kgb dave shelley and chainsaw on the radio thanks for switching us on you know people get fired every day for uh, poor productivity maybe not showing up for work on time whatever but i want to hear really unusual firing stories at 888-570-1015 here's brett first up first in first up what's up brett how you doing dave tip top how you doing pal good yeah i was uh talking about story i managed a restaurant and i had one of my managers he had to uh he shoved a kid's head into a uh, window you know like on a soda cooler oh on a what yeah wait wait, wait, wait. Of, I, I didn't hear what you said he shoved a head through what he, okay this cook he put it uh this cook made him mad so he took his head and he put him in like a headlock and then he was near the soda cooler and he shoved his head right into the window of the soda cooler and busted the window this is one of the guys who worked at the restaurant yeah this is one of my managers and he did that to a, a busboy? A cook. A cook, okay, all right. Yeah. 
So he did right. it to a cook, oh. shoved his head in the window. Right. Well, it didn't do, you know, it didn't do much to the kid. The kid, you know, it's like uh, put a bruise on his head, but, you know, they didn't tell me about it. No one calls me about it. Next day I come in and his window's broke, and I asked uh, one guy about it, and they said, oh, oh I, he goes, I slipped and fell. Well, when the kid comes into work, he goes, so did you find out about the window? And I said, no, man. He goes, he goes oh, yeah. He goes, the guy shoved my head into the window. <laughs> so I had to call him in, and he came in that night. We had to fire him for it. All right, Brett, thanks, man. All right. See you later. Here is uh, Andy. What's going on? Hey, how you doing this morning? Talk to me, Brian. I'm doing great. Okay. Um, I paint the inside of Smart and Finals at night, and uh, a real good friend of mine, kid, asked me to hire her boyfriend to go to work for me. And on the second night we were there, he kept getting, like, dumber and dumber and couldn't do things and kept screwing up. <laughs> and I found out that he had an igloo cooler full of... Uh, well, I thought it was just Kool-Aid. That's what he told me it was. And when I went to take a drink of it later on, I found out it was 50-50 vodka and orange juice. No. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, that explains work. the dumber and dumber part. <laughs> you bet it does. Damn. So uh, I had to let him go home, and uh, that was a t- fun night. Yeah. Drinking on the job. Drinking heavy on the job. <laughs> Big old fat, Steve sweaty, Kenny. slob boyfriend. Thanks, Andy. Hey, later, guys. See you later. Hey. Let's go to Robert next here on KGB. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Uh, Robert Lee here. How you doing, pal? All right. Hey, uh, I was the foreman of a maintenance crew at a retail store. Now, Robert, I'm looking for unusual stories. I don't want the the same old. Oh, you know, he couldn't he couldn't make his quota or he couldn't get to work on time. I want something unusual. Okay, this guy was uh, playing with the mannequins. What do you mean? <laughs> you know, he was drawing circles on their boobs and uh, little, uh, little gardens on them. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Topi- and then, and then he would climb on top and uh, <gasps> do his thing. Oh. All the women were scared out of their gourd there. He was falling in love with the dummies? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Why were the women scared? Well, I mean, you'd, you'd walk, uh, they'd, they'd walk into the, where these little closets were where they were stored. Yeah. And they would... You know, they wouldn't be have any of the uh, circles on them or the little gardens and stuff the day before. But then the next day they come in. They, they <laughs> well, were tell the there. women not to be frightened. Just keep moving. Evidently, he only likes still women. Um, <laughs> how do you know it was him that was doing it? Uh, well, the security guard hit out in one uh, little cubicle, and he came in and was doing his thing, and uh, he Uh-oh. caught him. Oh, God. So how exactly do you explain yourself? <laughs> I slipped. I was fertilizing her garden. <laughs> well, he was only about 19 years old. Oh, oh my gosh. So uh, I don't know what to <laughs> how to explain it. Sounds like a bad Andrew McCarthy movie, which is redundant, <laughs> uh, but Mannequin. Where the t- uh, was that unusual enough, Dave? Did he, uh, did, he, did he, like, send flowers and stuff to the mannequins <laughs> after he got fired? Uh, did no, he call I, and ask how they're oh doing? God. Uh, was it a no, Venus de Milo? He, did that. he just went back home to where he came from. He went back home. Yeah. Uh, a lot of blow they, uh, up they didn't, normal uh, guys. They Listen, didn't put Johnny. In jail or anything like that. Johnny, we can't have you fouling the dummies like that. Johnny, you got to go. Even my favorite one, Stiffy. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Okay. Here's, Goodbye, Dave. Here's Gerald next on KGB. Wow. Gerald, what's going on, dude? Hey, how's it going, Dave? Tip top. Better now that you're on the show. What's going on, bud? Um, well, I was working for this property management company, and uh, the girl, my girlfriend was the property manager. And at the time, the management company had changed managers, and the manager at the time wanted her boyfriend in there as uh, maintenance. And in, so she tried to get me fired over that, and, but I was still doing my job, so they couldn't really fire me. So she took me out to dinner one night and said, hey, uh, they're trying to build a case against you and trying to fire you. She said, so what do you want to do? And I said, well, let's make it short and sweet. She said, okay, you're fired. And I'm uh, still seeing her. We still ended up having dinner and having a great time. Your girlfriend fired you? Yep. Wow. And we're still seeing each other. Fantastic. (gasps) How long ago was that? Uh, Four years ago. Wow. (laughs) Pretty amazing, isn't it? And what do you do now? I'm... Still in maintenance, but I'm working up in uh, San Bernardino. I'm right now in Fontana right now. Okay, thanks, Gerald. All right. See you now. Bye. Here is uh, Sean. What's going on? Hey, Dave. How you doing? Any uh, dummies in your story? Ooh, dumb. No, no, there's no dummies. Well, okay. actually, the guy was dumb. All right. Beyond dumb. I bought an attorney service that I worked for for many years, and one of our messengers, on the first day of me owning the company. First day of owning the company? First day that I owned the company. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I figured, you know, give me a year or two and I end up having to fire someone. I mean, I prepared myself for that a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, 
my phone starts ringing in the morning, and I'm getting calls from clients. I mean, I've known these people for years because they used to be an employee of the same company. And, and what kind of business is it, Sean? It's an attorney's service. We do messenger work and stuff. Between attorneys. Right. Okay. We pick up their paperwork and shuttle it around and everything else. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I start getting phone calls from the office manager. You get calls from those people, you're in trouble. I mean, something's obviously not wrong. Something got blown or something got screwed up. Okay. So anyway, the one lady told me, well, this employee, I really don't want to use his name. I do, but I don't. <laughs> don't. So anyway, um, they call me up and they say, this person is not allowed in our office anymore. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't look good on us when someone's not allowed to go in their office. I mean, they cut the cheese place. or something or what? <laughs> no, well, they, most law firms have a female receptionist. Right. So he goes in there and starts off with this joke. He's like, i got a joke for you. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. what was okay. The jo Do you know the joke? Well, the, I, I've heard parts of it from my clients, but yeah. he would never tell it to me. He oh. tried to explain it to me, but I wanted him out of my face so badly. I mean, I was <laughs> in fear of going to jail. Mm -hmm. So he was telling foul jokes to these women? Well, it started off with... So this girl and I are in bed, and I'm licking her. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, I don't, for some reason, some of the clients actually listen to the end of it. A couple <laughs> of other clients wanted to come by and tell it. Hang on, I want to hear the punchline, and then I'll be outraged. <laughs> I never got to the punchline. I mean, I tried to pull that punchline out of some um, of my clients, but yeah. I couldn't get there. It's sort of like in, where are they now? Andrew Dice Clay. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So anyway. I, I mean, the guy comes in my office and is like, can I see your radio for a second? The radios are valuable tools, and I didn't want him to keep the thing. Yeah. And I take his radio, and I said, now get the hell out of my office. Come by later on, pick up your check from my brother, but get away from me. So anyway, the guy comes back later on. He brings some friend of his who's an attorney and says that I've wrongfully terminated him. I explained to him what had gone on, and this guy says, well, you're firing my client because he's gay. All righty. What? And I'm sitting there going, no, I did not fire him because he's that. And he's like, well... You know, my client would have never told a joke like that because he's gay, and it went on and on and on. So finally, I mean, I just, I, I closed the door, the attorney and I sat there face to face, and I told him, I said, bullshit, it's like, if, <laughs> I said, this is what was going on. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I really don't care, because <laughs> if he comes back in my office again, I'm going to mutilate the guy. <laughs> All right, Sean, so you figured it'd be a year, it only took one day. It took me one day to fire my first employee. I haven't fired anyone since. All right, well, so you got it out of the way. When I was, when I was younger, I worked for a guy who fired me on a weekly basis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> time, I for a guy who's a type A personality. The guy came into, I used to manage a truck stop with his wife. And this guy would come in all the time and just yell and scream and freak out on all yeah. of us. Oh. I mean, so I learned well how to do it. <laughs> and I was taught by a master. But the guy's only problem is that he would fire us, and then ten minutes later he'd hire us again. Yeah, I worked for a guy like that. Well, and it was well, great. Yeah. One night he fired his wife and I both. <laughs> <laughs> so we were shopping. I ended up with a great wardrobe out of it. Don't ever fire both <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, thanks a lot for the call. 888-570-1015 is our number here at the KGB. Here is Tom next. What's going on, Tom? Hey, how you doing? Tip top. What's going on? Good. Well, I worked uh, for a large company in Chicago, and we got a new president uh, from Detroit. And he's trying to, I was the director of administration, and he's trying to, you know, tell me the ropes, what he wants, what he doesn't want. And he told me the story that uh, he didn't want to ever happen again, where the president of the Detroit office, where he came from, went into the first executive vice president's office and asked if he'd been screwing the uh, executive secretary that worked for them. And he said, uh, how he got this white look on his face and said, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I have. So he threw up his arms, walked out disgusted. The president, he went to the next executive vice president's office and asked him, said, have you been screwing the executive secretary? And this guy got this white look again on his face and said, yes, I have. And he said, shoot, you know, he's, you know again, he's just totally frustrated. He walks out and goes into the third executive vice president's office and says, have you been screwing the executive secretary? And he looks, he says, no. He says, okay, good, then you fire her Friday. <laughs> <laughs> A discriminating gal. Yes, yes. Three guys getting the secretary had to find the one who wasn't doing her yeah. so he could fire her. Yes, yes. So there, there was a moral there somewhere. Uh -huh. So that the other executives could say, gee, I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was a classic. And, uh, and I said, that can't be true. And he, he, he said, nope, it was a true story. He said, I don't want anything to ever happen like that in our office. <clears throat> so it was, it was a lesson learned about uh, dipping the pen in the company ink. Thank you, Tom. Hi. So to speak. Dan, before we take a break here, what's uh, the story? Well, the story is I had this employee who used the bathroom continuously, and, and we were wondering, what the hell's going on here? So one day, one, my supervisor was on the forklift. He went by the bathroom, and he pounded on it, and the door came open, and the guy was in for an <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what reverse position I is. Probably knew. facing the tank with the magazine up top on the All tank. All right, stop, stop, stop. 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 <laughs> 
Buster needs a timeout. I haven't had a breakfast yet. <laughs> Dave needs a drink. <laughs> oh, good. Buster's all for drinks. <laughs> oh, good. So you had to fire a guy for... Uh, well, I, no, I wrote him up for indecent exposure. <laughs> well, well, now, wait a minute. If he's in the bathroom with the yeah. door closed, was he supposed to do it in the lobby? Well, he should have had it locked. And he should he be didn't have the bathroom off. door locked. And you know what? He did not take me to, to unemployment co court or anything. <laughs> okay, but did he end up getting fired? <laughs> yes, he did. And what was the reason for the termination? Uh, well, he had had some other things. It was just a build-up. This was like the finale. <laughs> That's what he Apparently said. I told him I was going to mail a copy of the, uh, the write-up to his wife. And he shut up and went home. And he shut up and went home. <laughs> For falling in love with himself in the company bathroom. Yes, he did. We yes. all, you know, we have I, I, we have to clean that bathroom. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta go. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it home, boys. All right. That's what they got going on. The Daylight Savings Celathon this weekend. And then Monday, Kearney Mesa Ford's going to be out at the Hamul Open. And they're putting a bunch of brand new Fords. I think they even put a Mustang out on the par threes out there. So maybe you'll be driving home a brand new Kearney Mesa Ford from the good hearted people there at Kearney Mesa Ford. 7303 Claremont Mesa Boulevard between 805 and 163. Come experience the difference of Kearney Mesa Ford. Ten after seven, KGB. Dave Shelley and Chainsaw on the radio. How many times have you been fired in your career? Only in radio. I'm not talking about like from you only know, in radio. Not Once. from the Bacchus feast or anything <laughs> like that. I've only been fired once, and that was the job in Phoenix, where I was so happy. Fire me! Please. Is that the one where you got fired on vacation? Yeah, I was in Mexico on vacation, and they fired me. And then they sent me the uh, the confirmation letter. Postage due. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. man. But it was okay because I had a severance pay clause in my contract. Now, you didn't pay the money, did you? Or did you have to pay the money to read the letter? I had to pay the money to read the letter uh, just to find out what it was. Jeez. You know, and it was like three cents. It's like, oh, my God, you guys. What company was that? Uh, that was Sandusky Broadcasting. Is Sandusky still broadcasting anywhere? They completely divested themselves of their broadcast properties. I don't know because I know that the station I used to work for is Clear Channel now. I believe. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I was fired by the same company at the yep. same radio station as Shell about yep. uh, a year earlier. Postage due. What postage due? What do you mean? Well, I heard that you came in and they tried to give you your final check and you wouldn't accept it. That is correct. Yeah, because I had I had a contract, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So I settled for, you know, four cents on the dollar for the remaining. And <laughs> oh, did you really? Actually, no, I actually cut a pretty darn good deal because yeah. they just uh, just cut me off, baby. But you didn't have the, the indignation of having to pay <laughs> the postage due. No. Yeah. yeah, but you didn't have the partner I had. I was, ha I was like, scrounging the couch. I'll pay you anything. Who are you with? Uh... Oh, come on! I like her. Hey. Rockin' Arizona. <laughs> the ladies of the morning. <laughs> Cindy Wine was the under-the-breath name that she tried to get uh, by without hearing. Well, she was she was uh, viewed by some people as difficult to work with. Oh, not me. I always dug Cindy Wine. Well, she dug you, too. <laughs> Almost as much as you. <laughs> it was just... You'll always be my favorite, well, show. Well, thank you very much. Yep. That's very kind of you. Rockin' Arizona. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, when you work someone, with somebody who has a bad attitude and who um, it, it thinks everyone is against her. I hmm, so. wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> okay. Um, i got to move away from the subject. <laughs> no, I mean, really, I'd get tearful phone calls in the middle of the day. I just don't know what's going on. I'd be like, Laura Petrie, huh? Wow. <laughs> I'm just hanging out watching all my children. I don't know what happened to you uh, when you left the show, but anyway. That's a pity. I've yeah, been fired, I think, three or four times. Really? Sure. And what was the most painful? Uh, or was it painful? Because I was yes. happy. I was glad to be released. No, it was painful. Uh, it, it, it's painful every time yes. that you're told that your services are not good enough yeah. for this crappy radio station. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I, three times I've been fired. The worst one was getting fired. I got fired from a radio station in Racine, Wisconsin, that was broadcasting out of an old shack mm. that used to be on a golf course. Mm. Yeah. It was a, it was a it was a converted like clubhouse. Yeah. And it was in Racine, Wisconsin, and Racine If you're driving from Chicago to Milwaukee, which are both considered big cities, mm -hmm. you'll hit Racine right in the middle, which is not considered a big city. <laughs> Racine is kind of like uh geez, it doesn't really compare, but it's I, I would say it's like El Centro. Got it. Okay. Okay. It's. I mean, I don't believe anybody considers El Centro part of San Diego. No. No. I don't believe anybody considers El Centro uh, even a suburb. No. Of San Diego. No. Well, the guy who was running this radio station, the guy who hired me, mm -hmm. I went out to lunch one day. I came back and he was gone. Uh oh. Forever. Uh oh. I had missed the dismissal of this guy. Uh oh. And this is the guy who gave me my first job out of college. Right. You know. And uh, when I came back from lunch one day, all of a sudden he'd been fired. And they'd hired this new guy. And, uh, you know, when someone, when the guy who hired everybody has been fired and a new guy is coming in, mm -hmm. there's a great big excitement. And there's a lot of, ooh, I hear he's really good. And, ooh, I hear he, this is going to be neat. This is going to be great for mm -hmm, the radio mm -hmm, station. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying on the outside. On the inside, they're saying, I better do a lot of ass kissing because this right. guy didn't hire me. <laughs> Right. You know? And he's going to want to bring his friends in. Exactly. That's what they do. Exactly. And I was only doing, like, uh, the occasional fill-in on the air work. You were swing shift guy. I was the promotions director. That was my oh, job goody. What of you this radio this station. Racine? Oh, God, it was uh. awful. <laughs> so this guy, he, you know, we, we'd been working at this radio station. It was WRKR. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'd been working at this radio station for just a couple... I'd been there for just a couple months. That was it. Yeah. And I was doing... you're right out of college. Yeah. Okay. But I had tons of experience. Well, yeah, but, I mean, this is like how you're making it in the world. This is Correct. Your, your, all right. Correct. And, and, and I, I, will, I will tell you quite honestly mm -hmm. that I was extremely disappointed that my first job out of college was in Racine, Wisconsin. Yeah. Instead of doing mornings in New York City <laughs> because I was convinced right. uh -huh. that I would start at the top. Well, you had the talent. It just had not blossomed yet. At the very least right. in Milwaukee. Sure. I thought for sure I could get a job in Milwaukee. So here I, letters from there as well. So huh? here I am, not even on the air. I'm promotions director in Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, the three minutes a day I had where there wasn't a DJ begging for a free uh, Orange Julius what? gift certificate. I've never heard of anything. No, like I know that. you haven't. I was begging for some airtime. <laughs> so this new guy comes in, and the first thing he says to me is, is wow, get a load of the voice on you. And yeah. I thought, okay, here's Good, a guy who's going to yeah, put me on the air exactly where I belong. where I need to be. And then he starts implementing his major his his secret plan mm -hmm. of making the radio station sound like a Milwaukee radio station. Cool. Milwaukee's hot hit radio station yeah. this and Milwaukee that and Milwaukee's this and Milwaukee's that and uh -huh. there was only one problem. Which Just one. Would have been You can't hear the radio station in Milwaukee. Uh. <laughs> it's minor. We'll work <laughs> around that. That was the only problem. Oh god. Okay? Do you think they'd hired him and told him that you could be heard in Milwaukee? It's just it's just like us all of a sudden calling ourselves LA's number one classic <laughs> rock station. The only problem is you can't hear us in LA. Other than that, perfect. We, we got it all figured out. <laughs> but I was ready to play the guy's game. Sure. I was you want the airtime. You, you want know a what? chance. I'm a company man, Shell, then and now. As you know. Right? Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> exactly. All right. I understand. So, so I'm playing the guy's game, and every once in a while I get a little air shift, and I'm doing Milwaukee's this and uh -huh. Milwaukee's that, even though we're in even, Milwaukee's hot radio station, WRKR, Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and, <you know. laughs> so uh, cool. finally, after about a week or two mm -hmm. of this guy's uh, tenure, he comes to me, he calls me into his office, and he says, we got to make a change, and uh, you're, you there's... You, you ain't going to make it here. There's no room for you here at this radio station. Yeah. And remember, he's firing me as the promotions director. Right. I'm the promotions director. Okay? That doesn't mean I'm a guy who's on the radio. Right. I'm a guy who works in an office and makes sure that the guys on the radio have prizes and stuff to give away. To give away, sure. 
And I thought, okay, well, I must not be doing a very good job as promotions director. And I said to him, I said, well, why am I getting fired? And he said, you're not good enough to be on the radio in Milwaukee. Nope. Ah! <laughs> hey, mister! And I said, I'm not on the radio in Milwaukee. I'm not on the radio in Racine. Yeah. I'm not on the radio. He says, you're not good enough to be on the radio in Milwaukee. Huh. <sighs> Did you have a map in your pocket so you could show him the listener area between two cities? Well, I said to him, I only want to be on the radio in Racine here. Right. And that Uh-oh. that tweaked. Uh-oh. That was like a finger flick behind yeah, the ear yeah, yeah. of his ego, of his master plan of pretending that it was a Milwaukee radio station. <laughs> you know, and I said, hey, you know, hello, this is Racine. <laughs> he didn't care for that. Where is that bastard now? Let's call him up. <laughs> I have no idea, but the only, the, the, the redeeming grace was, you know, I walked out of there, mm-hmm. and the other DJs, and I, you know, when you're a young guy and you're not married, you hang with the other DJs, you know, you party with them and drink beer with them and go to the movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They were, uh, I was like a leper at that point. There well, was, they don't want the fired stuff to get off on them. It's exactly. Like cooties. I had fired cooties. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they were my friends, and they felt really bad for me. Mm-hmm. But they had to keep up the whole, rah, rah, we're in Racine. but Madison, really, right? We're really in Milwaukee. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so they were all very sorry for me. And, and the redeeming grace was, since I did not like this guy, yeah. and since I didn't like being a promotions director, and since I wanted to be on the radio in Milwaukee, right. I had been uh, you know, sending out my resume and stuff. Sure. So he fired me on Friday. And uh, on Monday, I got the call from R.J. Harris at WLPX, downtown Milwaukee. <laughs> but you're not good enough to be on the air in Milwaukee. I went, I, I, he woke me up. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. He woke me up. I accepted the job. He said, would you like to do 10 to 2? Yeah. This is how excited I was. Yeah. He says, would you like to do 10 to 2 for us? Yeah. And I said, you damn right I am. <laughs> Can I start now? He said, yes, you start today. And I was like, woo I hung up. The first thing I did was I ran down to the radio station in Racine where I was still living. Mm-hmm. And I told all the guys, huh. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'll be working in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> they were dying of jealousy. Oh, great. And in my coolness, uh-huh. I called my father, yeah. who was... You know, longtime veteran broadcaster, Absolutely. still on the air in Chicago, and yeah. I said, "Dad, I've made it! I <laughs> finally made it! I'm I'm not promotions director at that crap little radio station anymore. I'm doing ten to two in Milwaukee. Yeah, ten to two a.m. or p.m., son? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you going to be paid? Don't know." <laughs> I didn't know when I was working and how much I was getting, but I was working, baby. Savvy deal. Thank you. Come a long way from there, Dave. Master negotiator that you are now. So, day or night? Night. All right. It was 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., and I loved it. How much? Of course. I don't remember. I think it was... Minimum wage. I think it it was either $12,000 or $16,000. Hey, now. One of those two. And medical benefits? Oh, I was full-time employee of the Hearst Broadcasting Corporation, Mama. Daddy. That's right. Wow. I had free cosmopolitan. <laughs> that explains your sensitivity to women. Dave Shelley and Chainsaw. KGB. Unable are the love to die. For love is immortality. I will remember you. This is the story of someone loved. Carolyn. Will you? Brad's wife is Carolyn. She uh, truly is an angel in disguise. Let your love pass you by. Carolyn found out that she has breast cancer. It's inoperable. Brad and Carolyn have four children. Now these girls are going to lose their mother, and Brad's going to lose his wife. The Dave Shelley and Chainsaw Hamul Open. A benefit for Carolyn. This Monday at Steel Canyon. We're trying to get together some uh, a foothold for this family. Back in May of 99, she was my wife. I'm sitting here in March of 2000, and she's my hero. This is the KGB. Godspeed, Jeff.
This is KGB with Dave, Shelley, and Chainsaw. If I'm not mistaken, tickets for the Humphreys season go on sale this weekend. And uh, there's a lot of good KGB bands that are playing Humphreys this summer. We'll go through the lineup with you about 8 o'clock this morning. Have a pencil and paper ready in case you want to make a note on uh, which tickets you want to pick up. Because uh, sometimes with uh, Humphreys, the really big shows sell out the first weekend that the tickets are available. So you might want to take 10 minutes on the telephone. Or I think you can even buy tickets on the internet anymore. Well, Dave, I think that's true. <laughs> AM or PM? Oh, here they got these computers. <laughs> You know, you're trying to sell something, and you just end up sounding like a dude. No, shebag. you're doing a fabulous, fabulous job. A <laughs> All right, and we're giving away $5,000 this morning for everyone who is qualified in Vegas or bust. But now, now, ladies and gentlemen, it is... I can't do it if you do that to me. I can't. What's he doing? He's doing his dramatic faces at me. Well, I've oh. got a very dramatic story. We're going to cover baseball first, but I've got a very dramatic presentation coming up. <laughs> <laughs> He's just getting no, in character. I'm more like this. That was your, you know, Milwaukee voice. But go ahead. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just don't look at me. Okay, I've, I've got to put on the face to get up for this performance. Do you? Yeah. You can't do it without the face? All right, I'll try. No, no, no. I want you. I, I understand it. <laughs> Wait, I got to see this. <coughs> now, oh, my God. You look like Frankenstein. Well, it's Frankenstein very important. Very, very important. You know, you, you look exactly like Phil Hartman's Frankenstein that's when true. you do that. Oh, well, that's cool. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is time now for sports with Chainsaw here on KGB. Good morning. Well, good morning, and thank you very much, Dave Rickard, Shetty Dunn, Chris Boyer, and Edward R. Murrow. <laughs> the face <laughs> coming through the radio. <laughs> In the sports world. <laughs> but first this. Sterling Hitchcock gave up 14 hits and six runs against Anaheim's second string yesterday. In Peoria, Padres lose 8-1. to one. Just like they planned, Hitchcock playing possum before mowing down the Mets on opening day Monday in New York. He'll catch him off guard. Bruce Bochy has decided on his shortstop. Speedy Damian Jackson will start on opening day. Consistent but sore-kneed Chris Gomez will begin the season on the pine. Padres play the Mariners today in Peoria. Time now for a chainsaw investigative report. Outside the line. The seamy underbelly of American athletics. A chainsaw. Exclusive. Where'd you read it? <laughs> USA Today. They had a little blurb. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love the music. Thank you. That's the only reason we're doing the bit. <laughs> I know. Hey, we bought the CD. we got to make some money out of them. According to a survey of 1,400 NCAA Division I basketball officials, 84% of them have gambled since becoming a college referee. 23% have bet on the NCAA tournament, and 1% have not called a game fairly because of point uh, spread considerations. The NCAA pledges to be diligent about their efforts to eradicate these abuses of the game's integrity. The idea of officials making bogus calls to cover their own bets is outrageous. And after learning of this report, San Diego State Aztec basketball coach Steve Fisher feels vindicated. The Aztec coach has long been suspicious of a particular three seconds in the key call during a critical turning point of the Aztecs' 93-21 to loss to the University of Utah last season. <laughs> this has been Chainsaw <laughs> Investigative Reports. Outside the lines, a chainsaw exclusive. <laughs> is that a xylophone I hear? <laughs> I think, I think so. A... I think so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I love the cowbell frosting. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> all, all serious newscasters, mm. Merle, Cronkite, they all had a cowbell. And, right. and, you know, Dan Rather would be number one if he had a ratchet. <laughs> That's right. This is London. 
Yes. <laughs> Hire the percussionist from Loverboy, and those guys would be number one yeah. every time. National Football League news. The NFL owners have voted to keep instant replay for next season, although teams like New Orleans and Cincinnati were opposed because they hate being reminded how crappy they are. But the NFL has banned choreographed celebrations by two or more players. Oh. You know, they, they say one guy can, I guess, do it, you know, in the hip thrust and the dance and everything and the ball spinning. But to have four guys come in and do a little choreographed, you know, Backstreet Boys in sync thing is banned. Spontaneous jumping on and slapping is fine, but it's the choreographed thing that they say takes away from the game. Well, how is Paula Abdul supposed to make any money now? I know, at <laughs> halftime, apparently. And again, uh, this would not apply to teams like New Orleans or Cincinnati because they never have anything to celebrate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the National Bank, NBC News special report today in Washington. Here is Robert McCormick, NBC News. Bothered the heck out of me. I went out this morning and mowed the goddamn lawn. <laughs> Came in about 2 o'clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Skipball Association. Six games last night. Total number of tattoos. 391, down from the league average. The Dennis Rodman release has adversely affected those totals. Lakers beat Vancouver, and now 60 and 12. The Lakers are a league best in other sports. Diamond, get your hands on the C-section this morning's USA Today, provided it shows up at all. At your doorstep. Indeed, it is 7:31 and two seconds, and this is your 101.5 KGBFM Chainsaw Sports Network. Oh my. Dialing to the beat. Lovely. And the tune. Yep. Yep. What? Yep. What? I got something for you in here. What? Oh, crap. Come on in. I think I know what it is. Come on in. All right, hold on. He just said, hold on and he hangs up. I know. He said crap! Yes. What a filthy, filthy mouth. I can't believe that boy. <laughs> the word is crud. Crud. Now. I find myself using that word now. <laughs> what? Crud? Crud. Crud. So how far away is his... How far away is his what? Took him a year to get here. Come well, on. you know, he drags his feet. You don't need headphones. I'm right here. Oh, okay. Just step right up to the microphone there, son. Look what I got for you. Is this what I'm wearing on Monday? I'd like to see it on. Why? Come on. Not you have Monday. to have a fitting. I want to make sure no, that, that it fits. The... No, you I want to make sure that fitting. it fits. What is it? I got his dress for the Hamwell Open. Oh. It's a pretty little sundress. I think it's a uh, an sunflowers. Organza. Yeah, it's got flowers. It's yellow. It's very summery and Ooh, sheer. It's it got a matching <laughs> scarf. Yep. Oh, very pretty. sheer. A yellow sundress. What's this? It's a scarf. What do you? We'll wear? either do tie you... that around your head or your neck. Oh. Hey, where do you wear a scarf? Where do you wear? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't wear scarves. Tie it on your ass for all I care. <laughs> tie it around your neck <clears throat> very, very tightly, and it will end your pain. <laughs> this is supposed to be longer. No, it's not. It is not supposed to be longer. But I want to see it on you. Why? See because it, hey, listen, Monday. seriously, hang Let's on. See if it fits. This is the way it is. <laughs> I'm your sugar daddy. You're my bitch. I buy you these things, and I want to see if they look good or not before I go ahead and pay for them. Put the damn dress on, ho. That's the Come way on. it is. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch out. Can, Can you put the it? dress on properly, or are you going to wear it sideways like your thong? Oh, wear it the around. right way. The zipper goes in the back. Okay, right. I'd like to see it on you. Go try it on, because it might be too tight in the I chest. Well, we'll put that on when you get back in here. Hurry. It's time to do a fitting. This is gay, he says. <laughs> no. This is gay. <laughs> the sad thing is, I think he just figured it out. <laughs> Where'd you get this stupid thing? <laughs> Not all cross-dressers are gay. That's true. That's very true. Plenty of het guys do it. I'll tell yeah. you what, this is one of the hardest things Shooty's ever had to do in all the bet payoffs. Oh, he was about to cry. He's Why? calling me on the phone. There's no sundresses anywhere. <laughs> Did he call well, you yesterday? I was looking for How a, many times? I was looking for I this told him I didn't want this yellow sundress. Right, yellow and white polka dot. I told him this a long time ago because Abramus lost this bet to me where he has to wear a dress in the Hemwell Open mm -hmm. like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So he has plenty of time. It's not like he's got a weekend. And uh, he comes in and goes, 
I, I can't find nowhere. And no one's got it. I've been to. Uh, you should have heard him yelling at me uh, yesterday. Yeah, just nowhere. I said, you know, I can't get enough of the yelling. Well, I'm sorry I want to kill someone. I'm like, well, I'm glad it's Already. me trying to help you. Okay. City of three million people can't find a yellow dress. Right. So he comes in finally. After telling me he can't find it, he comes in with like this blue... D- First, he tells me he's going to bring in his girlfriend's dress for me. <laughs> sorry. And I'm sorry to hear you're dating a gal that fits the Bromwitz's dress size. Uh, but uh, then he brings in like this blue weird dress. And I said, no, yeah. I, that's, that's almost... That's what he brought a, in yesterday? That's almo- no. I said, that's almost a yellow oh. sundress, not quite. So yeah. he goes back again. You know what he brings me the next day? A pattern. He brings me a pattern. <laughs> He's going to sew the dress. Well, now, I told him that that would be an option because you can, you can actually, we could have sewn something up. It would have been fine. You can do it without sewing. You can do it with, you know, iron-on stuff. Oh, hang on a second here. What? This thing is way too tight. Get I in even, here. I can't even bend over to grab a golf ball. Get in here. Hold you know on what? A I, think it's, I think it's a young miss. I think he got it because it's a 13, 14, yeah. and they don't size them that way unless it's for little girls. Yeah. So this is for preteens. <laughs> But I call. I took the liberty of calling Lane Bryant, yeah. and they have it's, you know, they have bigger sizes there, yeah. and they have a lovely black and white polka dotted sundress. Black and white would be art. I, I think that would be. <laughs> 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 oh, here you don't have it zipped up, huh? Let turn around. <laughs> now watch. Let me show you an example. Here's a golf ball, right? Right. Oh look. You did I got it. it. I just mooned everybody. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> That'll be just fine. What do you think, Chainsaw? Perfect. Perfect. I think that's perfect. fine. It's I like that dress. What's well, the, what's I think, Abramowitz, it'll teach you to... <laughs> this uh, is going to get in my way. Pick up your golf <laughs> ball the proper <laughs> way. You squat down. You don't bend over. Like right? ladylike, right? right. Ladylike? Right. Right. Ladylike. Don't bend with your back. You that's the dress here. right there. Follow me. Here we go. There's the you golf You curtsy. Ball. There you go. No. Bend to the knees. There this. you go. Right. Scoop it up. And there you go. You're loving this, aren't you? This is gay. <laughs> no, not at all, Robbins. I think it's very manly. It That's the dress. Light. Now give the dress back to Shooty because you'll lose it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks awesome. It <laughs> <That> is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you look just fine, Bromo. I think Shooty's looking for a hat, too. A nice little sun hat to go with Actually, it. I've got one in my in the oh. office. Go get the hat. I want to see the hat. <clears throat> Are we going to be able to put video up? Oh, I don't know. Bromo, it's golfing? Yeah. Uh, what? Come back in here. We've got a hat for you. <laughs> I don't think you can unzip it by yourself anyway. <laughs> That's right. He's trapped in the dress. <laughs> Let's just leave him in. Now, he has to wear that. To- oh. Very oh, that is nice. Sweet. I want to see the hat on him. Hey, and you got a bargain at twelve ninety nine. Let's try, let's see it's the hat. It's a Liz. Well, I don't oh, know what Liz that means. Claiborne. Oh, Liz Claiborne. Liz Claiborne. Yeah. Very <laughs> <laughs> stupid hat. You know what we could do? <laughs> what? <laughs> the tag gets to come off, right? It'll be a scarf brim. Oh, Very clever. Hey, yeah, just do that. Oh, yeah. Just tie the scarf right there. Chainsaw. Oh, I look like an awesome. idiot, don't I? No, you know who you, you know who you look like, Michelle McGann. Who the heck's that? She's one of the greatest players in the LPGA. Oh, you look I don't just like look. Michelle McGann. <laughs> no. Michelle, that's a great idea. What? You t- you she tied the scarf on the hat. You're this set, dude. Dumb. You're do- done. This is dumb. You're done. Now listen. Oh, mini pearl with a tag. I love that. <laughs> now you have to wear this at the event the entire time. As soon as I get there, I can go in the bathroom no, and change. No, I got to no. drive over there like this. Once sure. you're, you have to wear the dress at all times while you're on the grounds at Steel Canyon. So, so I can change when I get there. Nope, you're on the grounds. You have to wear the dress to Steel Canyon. You know, Canyon. like I do, when you get to Steel Canyon, what am I going to change? Bathroom. In change car. here. In change car. here. Change here right after the show. I'm not driving over to Steel Canyon like this. Well, <laughs> well, look. I, the thing is, you're going to have to have somebody zip you up. Would yeah. you rather ask someone here? Give my dad or, to zip it up. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, well, I'd, I'd rather, rather zip it down. Hey, can I give you uh, a little advice? Yeah? On, uh, uh, you'll need some light-colored uh, underwear. Oh, I got blue. Panties. I got the chain. Blue the chainsaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure chainsaw my loves dad. everyone oh, knowing that. And <laughs> yeah, just wear some white undies. You'll be fine. Well, we had a bet where he didn't get to wear anything. Underneath, that's right. No, 
But I didn't lose that. I know, we tied. You can take the hat off for your headphones. I just want to hear your new answering machine message. <laughs> she came down from Birmingham one cold December day. Oh, this is an old one. What do you think, Dave? Oh, huh? This is the new one. Yeah, great. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Call us back. They won't. <laughs> do you... Are, are you are you proud of that, uh, Dad? Uh, Dad, <laughs> that was. I mean, are you happy with that message? <laughs> Dad, put the cat down. Answer the phone. <laughs> and you gallop apparently when you leave. Hello. Hello. Oh hi. Oh, hi. Hi. I got the cat here. Oh what a. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. I was just to see her. Just out the door. Hey, uh, oh, he's just out the door. <laughs> right. Where are you going? Oh, I, I really was. Why? Where? What? The. Uh, I got something to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I occasionally I do, but... Uh, I'm talking to your son right here, and he's standing here wearing a little yellow frilly sundress. Did you know oh, that? Uh, <laughs> oh, Dave, Dave. Well... Uh, Dad, I need some help on Monday. <laughs> He's wearing what? A little yellow what? He's wearing a yellow sundress. Well, it's he's, officially spring. You know our, about our big tournament coming up on Monday? He's got to play oh, golf. Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, he's got to wear a dress. In oh, the tournament. gosh. A little Ooh. sunflower mini dress, Dad. I need some help on Monday. Are you, you need you, some help? Are you going to be around like 12 yeah. o'clock, Dad? Oh, uh, let me check my... Uh, I'm pretty busy. Uh, social <laughs> calendar. You're, yeah, I, I'll be around, Dave. What? what we uh, need you to zip them up in the back. I need you to oh, zip me shoot. up in the back. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Well, I, I, I probably will can decline on that, but your mom could would be good at that. Well, the problem is, Dad, I have to wear this dress at the whole golf tournament. So you're asking him to it's go to the golf tournament? A little bit, no, my it? house is three miles away from the golf Wayne, if you rated yourself an eight, surely you've handled a zipper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might have overrated myself a little bit there, Dave. Uh, that's Dave Shooty there? Yeah, that's they, pencil now. Well, uh, <laughs> well, well <laughs> what's the, why are you wearing a... Uh, oh, get away if you don't me. mind my asking, why are you wearing a yellow dress? Uh, Dad, I lost a golf game. Oh, oh really? Yeah. The... So that was a, the bet? That was the bet. The loser has to wear this dress on Monday at the golf tournament. You get some kind of handicap or something? No, I don't get a handicap. Mm -hmm. It's golf. Me against him. Like, so so anyway, the deal is, Wayne, he's going to come home on Monday right after work, slip into his his little slinky dress, and he needs you to zip it up for him, okay? <laughs> well, uh, you don't need any special talent for that. that is what, it's a, well, it's hard to reach for him. He can't reach he it. Can't he needs someone it. to zip up his dress for him, and you're his only hope, Wayne, so... You're, you're nominated. I, I was last. You, I'm, you surely asked two or three other people before you came no, to me. Oh, you're the first number one on the list. That's who he wants. Okay, so uh, just want you to know, we're going to need you to zip up the dress. Okay. Well, uh, Dave, I congratulate you on the on the tournament. I Dave tells me it's really uh, uh, it's going to be a real success and it's a great cause. Right. How's so the cat, I've, Dad? What? How's the cat? The cat. So this cat is. Uh, you know what? You know what he does. He, he puts the cat food into the microwave, and he heats up the cat food. Yuck. You don't do that, Dad. Well, you have to make... No, you, you have to make it palatable, David, for them. You just don't... What are you feeding oh, the cat? No, uh, I don't really know what it is. It's some fancy uh, cat food uh, mm. that we bought, but it, 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 if, you, if you feed the cat half of it, um, then... Fascinating. All right, well... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I know that... Uh, I, I, most cats will eat the food right out of the can. Oh, yeah. they will. Yeah, they well, the, the they're not real that, particular. About what's the cat's name, Wayne? Oh, oh well, let's see. Kelly. Oh, what did I Kelly name is cat? Dave, Dave named her Kelly. It's Dave's cat. Oh, cat's you named cat. her. Oh, oh, cat. Cat. oh, oh I see. Oh. It's, it's your I, kitty cat. Oh, You've been walking around here complaining <laughs> about the cat. cat. Oh, my dumb dad got a cat. Oh, no, I'm oh, second on the list here. This cat is definitely. Uh, she <laughs> follows. Dave around for the Oh, same. It's isn't aww. that cute? You should bring your kitty to the golf course. Shut up, kitty, yeah. kitty, kitty, kitty cat. It's a stray cat <laughs> well, that was given to us, and uh, I'm just watching it. I think that's it, wonderful so. that you took in a stray cat. That's well, very sweet. You know they love to fly. She's old. She's not, a, <laughs> she's not a spring chicken, but she's a nice little gal. She, uh, she, <laughs> she absolutely adores Dave. She follows him around, and I'm kind of second fiddle. If, 
And who named the cat, Wayne? Dave did. Oh, I did. and what it's, did you name her? It's a calico cat, so I named her Callie. 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 Callie, oh. you named a cat. Oh. Well, that is Dave. genius. <laughs> Great grandmother was named Kelly. Oh from yeah, I know, I know. That's not why I named the cat Kelly. Because Grammy Kelly, Grammy Kelly. Well, it, uh, she's a nice. Uh, she does <laughs> she's a nice mainly. Cow. She sleeps. But, I, named uh, the ca- I named the cat Crud. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of work ethic does that cat well, have? There? None. Is the cat house trained? Uh, yes, yeah, she's very. She's really. Uh, we we are pretty well trained here. The the girl, the lady that gave us the cat. Her, is her she husband house trained? Works at an office, and someone dumped the cat off yeah, there, which is a heinous crime, really. Because, it really is. Yeah, it, it is, and so they. She, Shelly, getting serious with Wayne. Well, now. I am. I think it's wonderful that you guys have seen the need that this cat has, and you've taken it into your lives. Oh. Well, the cat would wonderful. rather be stray. I promise no. you. It rather, it's begging for someone to put it in a bag <laughs> full of rocks. Oh, find yeah, the river. Actually. You know how he changes the cat box. I guess apparently there's a drainer system thing where you you can funnel it like gold, right, like water and gold, right, yes. and then it comes into big clogs. Right. He takes it out and he throws it in the canyon. Well, <laughs> he walks out. Hey, why don't you just tell our whole life story <laughs> here? That's not <laughs> exactly true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tanya had like seven cats and and she couldn't take another one in, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she's yeah. she's. Uh, I don't have to take that cat if you don't want to. Uh, She's singing with it. me in in, in, this, in my yeah, upcoming uh, concert. So. so will you zip up Abramowitz's dress for him? Let me... Oh, gosh. Yeah, he'll, he'll Say do. yes. He'll but, you know, I, I might come out just to look at the pageantry and, and all the fun that you're going to be having. He needs someone to zip his dress up for him, Wayne. You're nominated. Will you take the job? Well, is there going to be... There won't be any notoriety oh. there, I hope. No. And yeah. here's Abramowitz. He's... I will hiding from the that. window no. when people walk by. You will do it. He'll do it. He'll do well, it. <laughs> Dad, what does the dress yes. look like anyway? It's, it's adorable. It's a yellow sundress. It's very it's adorable. sweet. Adorable. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Dave, uh, how? D- no, I won't ask you how you get into those kinds of things, but yeah. looks like you would change your mode of, of gambling here. Well, uh, he doesn't have any money, so we, they got to yeah. bet something. Well, he's hitting a lot of golf balls out into the canyon, I'll tell you that. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if... Well, it'll uh, be fun to collect after that I hit my that nine iron 300 yards into the canyon. Well, actually, he was making new strips of the lawn out there. I I had to get after him because... Oh, I was he, hitting balls off the grass. Quit hitting the divots in my grass. <laughs> yeah. and so oh, he was. I've got gophers, and I've got David hitting golf balls off that thing, so... Uh, it, it and the gophers are tripping over those clogs of cat crud you're throwing out there in the canyon. <laughs> There's more of those cat crud balls than there are golf balls now. Well, is that because you've been out trying to find the golf balls? See, he's, he's ticked now that I told you guys this story. Well, it was not quite... Well, it's, it's, it's inaccurate, one. But it's very accurate, Dad. You accurate? walk down... You walk down to the edge of the canyon, you throw it down, and like where so all the witches are. A ball of cat crud? Are you wearing a glove at least when you do it, Wayne? <laughs> no, he goes over. <laughs> oh, I see. Tray. He takes the whole tray and wings out the cat crud? Yeah. Yep. With his underwear. No, they... With his underwear. It, he does it in your underwear. No, he doesn't wear my underwear anymore. <laughs> oh, you had a little talking to about that? <laughs> no, I just... I, <laughs> wow, Wayne... You hide your underwear. You hide your underwear. <laughs> How old are you, Abramowitz? How old are you? Don't tell him, Dave. How old are you? Uh, 30, uh, You're 38, and you 38. have to hide your underwear from your father, who's <laughs> winging cat crud into the canyon. It is I'm underwear. Underwear and a dress. Father, by the way. So thanks a lot, Dave, for kind of giving. Uh, wow. I mean, those are. Uh, uh, no, it's family uh, business. You <laughs> big mouth, son of a bitch. You know, yeah, Wayne is awfully. Right. Uh, well, I gotta go. I gotta oh, get out of here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like wish you luck with your cat tournament. crud to fling. Gotta what happened? I mean, what do the witches say when you throw cat crud at oh, them down God. there? They don't do oh, that. Witches, it's actually heard. chasing them away. Actually, oh, really? it's been a working. good thing. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, I was in. I was in the coffee place. Oh, um, here we go again. <laughs> awfully yeah. chatty for and a guy some, who's got to go. The guy, guy at, at a KGB. What part of I got to go? Don't you understand? Someone asked me about. The witches down the canyon. Uh-huh. He's addicted to the spotlight. Do nothing about him He'll go on and on and on until but, uh, he's told this to I think 50 people already. Wayne! 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 Dad! Wayne! I don't know. Dad! I've... Wayne! Uh, See, he'll keep doing this. Stop well, talking! David about him See, later. listen to him. Wayne, go! <laughs> Hang up, Wayne! You gotta go! There, so. You gotta go. <laughs> Wayne! <laughs> Quite a story, Dave. Yes. Oh, I thought you guys had gone. I was no, no, no. I kept talking. <laughs> they, were just, they, had, they were just enthralled with your amazing story. Uh, Wayne, I've right. got to go. Wait. I, go. I, I do have to get out of here. I got to go. I got to go. Thanks for calling.
Wayne? Yes. Do you love me? <laughs> Say I love you. Well, I... Say I love you. Well, what? Say I love you. Oh, I gotta get out of I here. I gotta go. The DMC! With Dave Shelley and Chainsaw, we'll be right back. This is the KGB my wish list of travel destinations, and so we're going to have a real good time down there. Well, yesterday uh, I received uh, from a friend uh, a, a couple of pieces of paper, and I didn't think too much about it at the time, and then I had a moment to look at them further, and I realized this, is, this, this could be my Magna Carta. This may be something that I want to take to uh, an artist and have him really uh, put down on canvas and frame and hang over my fireplace. What is With this? maybe a special key light. Wow. Yes. Very and maybe a velvet special. rope around it. Oh, I could hang it next to my hole-in-one ball. I don't know, uh-huh. but something special is going to happen. Is what is it you ask, Shell? What, what is what it? What is it? You ask, Shell. <laughs> it's the ten simple rules for dating my daughter. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a ways off, but I guess you do have to go ahead and decide what stance you're going to take. I think you should take that to the school, the nurseries, and everything now, and imprint it on yeah. all those boys' minds now. I think so, but I think really what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this I'm going to have this blown up. It's just on regular typing paper right now, but I'm going to have this blown up. I'm going to have it, you know, written with, uh, uh, you know, fancy hand, uh, yes. someone who calligraphy. does uh, calligraphy, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want it too fancy. I want it to be easily legible, but right. readable from a distance of about 15 feet in front of the fireplace behind the velvet rope with a gun to the guy's head. Sure, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And have a little waiver that he can sign, you know, I, I read and understand this, and I do read English. Yeah, that's a good one. Here are the simple, the ten simple rules for dating my daughters. Okay. Rule number one, uh, if you pull into my driveway and honk, you'd better be delivering a package because you're sure not picking anything up. <laughs> did you ever date a guy who did that? <laughs> no, they all had to come to the door. <laughs> that was a Lee Dunn rule? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They had to come to the door for inspection. Mm-mm. Very good. And a lot of, of them uh, Just a visual once over. Fingernails. No body cavity, physical No body cavity, but you had to have shoes, a decent haircut, and while he was inspecting that, Mom was out getting the tag number of the car. <laughs> yeah. was, they tag-teamed me, you know. A good haircut? That's double coverage. Oh, yeah, yeah, good haircut. And, in the uh, 70s? Yes, in the <laughs> 70s, and many were sent away because of the... Really? You had some rejects? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. Rick Rosecrans was not allowed even in the house. Long-haired bastard? What Long-haired, was... barefooted bastard. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, good luck with Lee. Yeah. Now, were there oh, times, were there times when you actually would get all dressed up and, and shelly eyes and just mm-hmm. beautiful and be ready, and then suddenly it's 8 o'clock, mm-hmm. knock, knock, mm-hmm. and then rejection? You have to yep. trudge back upstairs yep. and just... Rick Rosecrans, we were not allowed oh to go out. We were gosh. just going to the movies. That's a good night. And so, yeah. how, old, how old were you at this time? 16 or 17. And was there any, oh, daddy! Oh, you can't eat. Well, you can imagine. Was there, was there a scene, I mean, with Rick, you, and your dad all in the same room? No, Rick had left. And actually, Rick left to go pull his hair back in a ponytail and put some shoes on. Yeah. He came back. He wanted to complete the date. Yeah. And at that point, it was like, well, you know what? Now I have something to prove to you. Man. You can't tell me, you know, who I can date based so he on didn't have to get a hair- appearance. He only had to get a scrunchie? He didn't have he to get, get a haircut? He had a scrunchie, yeah. No. Yeah, because I think he knew at that point in time that he had gone... So pat because my thing was well I don't I don't judge your friends by the way they look. He and literally showed up barefooted. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were going to like you know a summer a thing. Yeah, a drive-in, and you know, <laughs> get the head, <laughs> get anywhere, come off anyway. head start on the back seat. <laughs> No, he showed up barefooted. I mean, it was summer, and, and I guess he just didn't think twice about Your dad it. Dad is that girl's dad, man. You're Marlo oh, yeah. Thomas's dad. Oh yeah. Got to have Mar- you know, Donald Hollinger, or else they all <laughs> reject. So there was a, uh, there was a, uh, just a, a silence for a week because I didn't know what else to do. I mean, I thought, you know, I get the, I think uh, he's being unreasonable. I don't know what else to do. And so mom intervened, and pretty soon I was able to have a little more freedom, but not a whole lot. Here's rule number two, Shell. You do not touch my daughter in front of me. You may glance at her so long as you don't. Do not peer at anything below her neck. Right. If you cannot keep your eyes or hands off my daughter's body, I will remove your hands for you. <laughs> <laughs> From your body. <laughs> Rule number three. I'm aware that it is considered fashionable for boys to wear their trousers so loosely they appear to be falling off their hips. Please don't take this as an insult, but you and all of your friends are complete idiots, really. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I want to be fair and open-minded about this issue, so I propose this compromise. 
You can come to the door with your underwear showing and your pants ten sizes too big, and I will not object. However, in order to ensure that your clothes do not, in fact, come off during the course of your date with my daughter, I will take my electric nail gun and fasten your trousers (laughs) securely in place to your waist. I think my dad wrote this. Is it written by him? I think your father is a brilliant man. (laughs) Yeah, that's I pretty much figured that. Rule number four. I'm sure you've been told that in today's world, sex without utilizing a barrier method of some kind can kill you. Let me elaborate. When it comes to sex, I'm the barrier. I will kill you. (laughs) (laughs) Number five. Mm -hmm. It is usually understood that in order for us to get to know each other, we should talk about sports, politics, and other issues of the day. No, please do not do this. The only information I require from you is an indication of when you expect to have my daughter safely back at my house. And the only word I need from you on this subject is early. (laughs) Okay, we're halfway through. (laughs) (laughs) This is good. Uh, Mind you, this is not a bit. This no, is, I know. No, this no, is no. we're not taking it that way. No, no not at all. Okay. No, I'm having a flashback. Good. Mm. It's good for you. No, really? No, you've strayed. <laughs> I didn't stray. This is I a swear. public service. This is a public service to all the dads. Uh-huh. Out there. Rule number six the rules for dating my daughters. I have no doubt that you're a popular fella with many opportunities to date other girls. <laughs> and that's fine with me as long as it's okay with my daughter. Otherwise, once you've gone out with my little girl, you will continue to date no one but her until she's finished with you. <laughs> if you make her cry, I'll kill you. If you make her cry, I will make you cry. Oh. Huh? <laughs> yes. You don't have a problem with any of this, do you, Shell? No. It sounds completely reasonable to Shell's me. Shell's like having Vietnam flashbacks. Her eyes are rolling into the Shoppers, back of her head. Get down. Oh, my God. <laughs> Rule seven. Uh huh. As you stand in my front hallway waiting for my daughter to appear and more than an hour goes by, do not sigh and fidget. Hey, if you want to be on time for the movie, you shouldn't be dating. My daughter is putting on her makeup, a process which can take longer than painting the Coronado Bridge. Instead of just standing there, why don't you do something useful, like washing my car? <laughs> Number eight. The following places are not... And underscore, repeat, not appropriate for a date with my daughter. Places where there are beds, sofas, or anything softer than a wooden stool. Mm. Places where there are no parents, policemen, or nuns with an eyesight. Places where there is darkness, dancing, holding hands, or happiness. Places where the ambient (laughs) temperature (laughs) is warm enough to induce my daughter to wear shorts, tank tops, midriff t-shirts, or anything other than overalls, a sweater, and a goose down parka zipped up to her throat. (laughs) Also not appropriate. Movies with a strong romantic or sexual theme are to be avoided. Movies which feature chainsaws are okay. Mm. Hockey games are okay. Old folks' homes are better. (laughs) (laughs) Number nine. Do not lie to me. Though I may appear to be a pot-bellied, balding, middle-aged, dim-witted ass. (laughs) On issue.